They say that parenting is like dancing. You take one step, your child takes another. I have discovered that getting parents to rededicate themselves to their children is only half the story. The other half is preparing the children to reaccept the parents. When I was very young, remember that we had this crazy mutt. I remember we had this crazy dog, the mutt dog uh, named Black Girl. And uh, she was a mix of wolf and retriever. Not only wasn't she much of a guard dog, she was such a scared and nervous thing that it is a wonder that she did not pass out every time a truck rumbled by or thunderstorms swept through Indiana. My sister Janet and I gave that dog so much love, but we never really won back the sense of trust that had been stolen by her previous owner. We knew he used to beat her. We didn't know with what, but whatever it was, it was enough to suck the spirit right out of that dog. A lot of kids today are hurt puppies <coughs> who have weaned themselves off the need for love. They couldn't care less about their parents. Left to their own devices, they cherish their independence. They have moved on in life and have left their parents behind. Then there are the far worse cases of children who harbor animosity and resentment toward their parents so that any overture that their parents might undertake would be thrown forcefully back in their face. Tonight, I don't want any of us to make this mistake. That's why I'm calling upon all the world's children, beginning with all of us here tonight, to forgive our parents. If we felt neglected, forgive. Forgive them and teach them how to love again. You probably weren't surprised to hear that I did not have an idyllic childhood. The strain and tension that exists in my relationship with my own father is well documented. My father is a tough man, and he pushed my brothers and me hard, really hard. From the earliest age to the best, he wanted us to be the best performers we could possibly be. He had great difficulty showing affection. He never really told me he loved me, and he never really complimented me either. If I did a great show, he would tell me it was a good show. If I did an okay show, <laughs> he would say nothing. He seemed intent above all else. I need tissue, I'm sorry. He seemed intent. He seemed intent, above all else, on making us a commercial success, and that he was more than adept. My father was a managerial genius, and my brothers and I owe our professional success in no small measure to the forceful way that he pushed us. He trained me as a showman, and under his guidance, I couldn't miss a step. But what I really wanted was a dad. I wanted a father who showed me love. And my father never did that. He never said, I love you, while looking at me straight in the eye. He never played a game with me. He never gave me a piggyback ride. He never threw a pillow at me or a water balloon. But I remember once when I was about four years old, there was a little carnival, and he picked me up and put me on a pony. It was a tiny gesture, probably something he forgot five minutes later, but because of that one moment, I had this special place in my heart for him. Because that's how kids are. The little things mean so much. They mean so much. For me, that one moment meant everything. I only experienced it one time, but that one time made me feel really good about him and about the world. But, I, but now I am a father myself. And 
one day I was thinking about my own children, Prince and Paris, and how I wanted them to think of me when they grow up. To be sure, I would like them to remember how I always wanted them with me, wherever I went, how I always tried to put them before everything else. But there are also challenges in their lives because my kids are stalked by paparazzi. They can't always go to the park or to the movies with me. So what if they resent me when they grow older? What if they resent how my choices impacted their youth? Why weren't, why weren't we given an average childhood, like all the other kids, you might ask? And at that moment, I pray that my children will give me the benefit of the doubt, that they will say to themselves, our daddy did the best he could, given the unique circumstances that he faced. He may not have been perfect, but he was a warm and decent man who tried to give us all the love in the world. I hope that they will always focus on the positive things, on the sacrifices I willingly made for them, and not criticize the things they had to give up, or the errors I've made, and will certainly continue to make in raising them. For we have all been someone's child, and we know that despite the very best of plans and efforts, mistakes will always occur. That's just being human. And when I think about this, of how I hope that my children will not judge me unkindly and will forgive me, forgive my shortcomings, I am forced to think of my own father. And despite my earlier denials, I am forced to admit that he must have loved me. He did love me, and I know that. There were little things that showed it. When I was a kid, I had a real sweet tooth. We all did. My father, he did try. But my favorite food to satisfy my sweet tooth was glazed donuts. <laughs> and my father knew that. So every few weeks, I would come downstairs in the morning and there on the kitchen counter was a bag of glazed donuts. No note, no explanation, just the donuts. It was like Santa Claus. Sometimes I would think about staying up late at night so I could see him leave them there. But just like with Santa Claus, I didn't want to ruin the magic for fear that he would never do it again. My father had to leave them secretly at night so as no one might catch him with his guard down. He was scared of human emotion. He didn't understand it or know how to deal with it, but he did know donuts. <laughs> <laughs> when I allow the floodgates to open up, there are other memories that come rushing back. Memories of other tiny gestures, however imperfect, that show that he did what he could. So tonight, rather than focusing on what my father did not do, I want to focus on all the things he did do and on his own personal challenges. I want to stop judging him. I have, I have started reflecting on the fact that my father grew up in the South, in the South, in a very poor family. He came of age during the Depression, and his own father, who struggled to feed his children, showed little affection toward his family and raised him. He raised my father and his siblings with an iron fist. Who could have imagined what it was like to grow up a poor black man in the South, robbed of dignity, bereft of hope, struggling to become a man in a world that saw my father as subordinate. I, I was the first black artist to be played on MTV. And I remember how big a deal it was even then, and that was in the 1980s. My father moved to Indiana and had a large family of his own, working long hours in the steel mills, work that killed the lungs and humbles the spirit, all to support his family. 